Hey guys, this is Jamin bringing you another do-it-yourself computer video. Uh, I'm working on a laptop right now and I'm going to show you a solution for if your computer is turning on but nothing is displaying. So what this looks like is your computer is, is turning on, the lights are coming on, you can hear the clicks of your motherboard, you may even be able to hear your fan engage, but the screen is either staying black or it's just dimly lit but nothing is happening. Now this is a separate fix from if your computer is not turning on at all. Sometimes people misunderstand them for each other. So if your computer is not turning on at all, look below in, in the description. That's a my computer won't turn on fix video. Also, if your computer turns on but then shuts off right away, or if it freezes right away, that's that video for my computer won't turn on in the description. This is just for when your computer turns on but the screen stays black. Now, in, there's a lot of things that can cause this issue. What I'm going to do in this video is take you through the easiest uh, and the cheapest fixes first and then progressively go deeper into the computer uh, to the more expensive, more um, in invasive fixes where you have to get into the computer. So to start with, make sure your computer is turned off. And we're going to try to get inside of it and access your RAM. That, that's probably the easiest and the cheapest fix that this can be. Um, now, if hopefully your computer has an easy access panel somewhere where you can access your hard drive and your RAM. In my computer, I do not. I have to take off my entire bottom case. So unless yours is, is somewhat similar to this, it may be worth looking up a disassembly video on your specific computer um, so you limit your chances of, of breaking anything when you're getting in. So I'm going to get into my computer. I'm going to take off my battery. I'm going to start removing screws. Uh, make sure that when you're removing screws, if you can't find a, a disassembly video on exactly how to do it, make sure you watch out for a few things. Sometimes they hide screws under your rubber feet. Sometimes they hide screws under the battery, like here. And sometimes they hide screws under your, your DVD drive when you take that out. So keep in mind of uh, watching out for that. Also, in my computer, I have to take off my keyboard to get access inside, so also watch out for that. Okay, so now I'm ready to take off my bottom case. I'm going to take my little metal pry tool and go along the seam of my bottom case and my palm rest to take this off. There you go. So this is your RAM. Oftentimes your laptop will look like this. It'll have two separate RAM ports. Sometimes they'll be stacked on top of each other. Sometimes they'll be side to side. Uh, if you only have one RAM stick in your computer, you'll need to purchase another good stick of RAM for this test. In, in order to test your RAM, we're, we're going to remove one of them. Uh, oftentimes your RAM is held in this way by two spring-loaded arms. Pull these arms apart and the RAM will pop up like that and then you just slide it out like that. So we're going to remove one stick of RAM. We're going to try to turn your computer on again. If your computer turns on, it means that this stick was bad and this stick is good. So you would need to replace the stick of RAM. If you need help in determining how to buy the right RAM for your computer, again, check below in the description. I'll have a video showing you how to pick the right RAM. Uh, there's a lot of numbers on this RAM stick and you want to make sure you get the right one for your computer. Not all RAM will work with all computers. If your computer does not work at this point and you're still getting a black screen, we're going to switch and test the other RAM stick. So slide that one back in, make sure it's flush, and then just press down and it snaps back in. Now we're going to release the other one and we're going to try to turn on your computer again. Again, if your computer turns on, it means you found the bad stick and you need to replace it. If your computer does not turn on at this point, we're going to try testing an another component. The next component we're going to test is your CMOS battery. This is a less likely uh, culprit for what's causing your screen issue, but as long as we're into your computer al already, it's, it's worth testing. This is your CMOS battery right here. It looks like a large watch battery. You may also see it in this presentation right here. Sometimes the CMOS battery is wrapped in electrical tape and it's wired and plugged into your laptop like this. So those are the two different kinds of CMOS batteries you may see in your laptop. 
So in order to test this as being the culprit, uh, these are fairly cheap. Um, they're usually un well under a, a dollar for each one. Now in order to swap out your CMOS battery, they're fairly cheap, well under a, a, a dollar for one of these, especially if you buy a, a multi-pack. But there's a spring here and a spring under it near here. So I'm going to push the battery in and slowly l l lift it up, just like that, and the battery comes loose. When you're doing this, take care to make sure you don't break this part. If that breaks, the CMOS battery cannot be properly secured in. Um, so make sure you don't break that. Be, be very gentle with it. And then you would replace this. Just slide your new one in, snap it down like that, and it's fairly easy and, and cheap to replace that part. E even though it's only probably 10% of the time that's the cause of your issue. Now if the RAM test and the CMOS battery swap didn't work, we're going to move deeper in, into your computer at this point. We're going to try hooking your computer up to an external monitor or a TV if you have one available. Oftentimes, like in my laptop, the fastest way to hook it up is with an HDMI port and an HDMI cable. You just slide this right into the HDMI port and then on the back side of your external monitor, the other side of the HDMI cable slides right in there. Just like that. Oftentimes too, on older computers, you can use this, which is a VGA cable. That's another way of hooking your external monitor into your computer. Now once you've hooked your external monitor to your computer and you try turning it on, if the external monitor works and displays a picture and your computer still is not, then you've kind of identified your issue. Your motherboard is working properly and it's uh, sending out a signal, but your LCD or your LCD cable is faulty. So at this point, what you would do if you do see a picture on your external monitor is I would reseat your LCD cable. What that means is unplugging it from the motherboard and then plugging it back in, possibly even unplugging it from your LCD and then plugging it back in. And to go in and do that, you definitely want to locate a disassembly video for your specific computer because you're going to want to know how to access the real intricate parts of your computer to do this safely. After reseating your LCD cable, if it doesn't work, then what that means is your LCD cable or your LCD is bad. Uh, at that point, try replacing your LCD cable as it's probably much cheaper than your LCD. And if that doesn't work, uh, re replace the LCD it itself. Now keep in mind as well, if you plug, plug in your external monitor and it doesn't display and you don't see any, anything on the screen, don't assume at that point that it's your motherboard. Some computers don't like external monitors, and as long as they think they can display to their own screen, they won't send a signal to the external. So at that point, unplug your LCD cable and plug in your monitor and then see if it displays a picture. If even at that point you are not seeing anything on the external monitor, we've identified it most likely it's your motherboard at this point, and your motherboard would need to be replaced. So again, reference uh, a disassembly video for your model so you can safely access that component. But that, that's our video. We've taken you through the RAM fix. We've taken you through the CMOS battery. We've helped you identify how you can possibly find the LCD or the LCD cable, and then ultimately your motherboard if, if that's what's wrong. So don't, don't worry, you will be able to fix your computer with one of these steps. Uh, take it slowly in progression, and if you have any questions, if you have any problems you face and you didn't see something that I described, uh, let me know in a comment, and I try to get back to you a couple times a day at least. So uh, like and share if this was helpful. Subscribe if you enjoyed do-it-yourself computer repair. Thanks for watching, guys.